Hey, this is OXDF, and back for a bonus video. Uh, I got a couple requests about people, well, people who sounded disappointed that I was doing this in Python and not Rust, and I am not promising to do every day in Rust, but I had a little bit of extra time this afternoon and wanted to just take a look at it, so I thought I'd throw together a quick video on uh, what does this look like in Rust. Um, I already saw, I'll put a link to the Python solution. Um, I'm not going to go over the, the challenge again. Um, basically, well, here, let's, let's just jump in. I'll show you. Um, I'm going to start with my gen day script here. So I do my gen day 22. I'm going to do day one and I'm going to do rust. And so now we're in the day one.rs folder. Uh, and we can go ahead and open up main.rs. So uh, I fetched input.txt, which would be here. We can see we've got a bunch of numbers, each separated by uh, empty lines. So basically, each there's a bunch of elves, and each elf lists all their the calories in their food. So the first elf has all of these right here. And basically, we're going to just sum those up, and that's how much calories that elf has. And we want to know in part one, what is the which elf what is the which elf has the most calories? So what's the top, the highest value? And then in part two, what are the top three values? So um, I'm already reading in here to data. Um, the that you know all the lines uh and we'll start working from there so i'm going to say let elves equals uh and we'll do data dot split and we will do it on there and what's gonna be cool about doing this in rust is we can really start to pipeline this so we can now do uh we can then map that so we're going to take now we're taking map is going to look over the array and apply some function to everything so right now because we split on double new line each element will be like, oh, this will be the first element, these 13 lines, the next element will be these, etc. And so for each of those, so we'll call those elf. For each elf, we want to do uh, elf.split on new line, like that. And what are we going to do from there? Well, we're going to actually map on that. We're going to do a map. So within that, we're each elf, we're going to say, take each line in there, and we'll do an e.parse. And that parse is what's going to turn it into, it's going to take it from a string to an integer. Uh, and then we'll need to unwrap that um, because the result of a parse um, has some metadata about whether it was successful or not. And that is looking there. Um, let's see. So then after we do that to each, after each, within each elf, we're going to take each element and turn them into numbers. And then we'll, over the course of the whole elf, we will sum. I'm sure there's going to be some typing that gets required along the way here, but we'll see how this goes. Um, and then when we're left here, so right now we're left with this map object and we'll just need to do a uh, collect. Well, I don't know where that goes. So collect there to turn it into a vector. Now it's going to complain probably because it doesn't know what type it needs. So let's tell them what we want. So we're going to want this to be at the end of the day, a vector of u size, so a vector of integers. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's see. So it parse needs needs more information too. So we'll come over here and we will parse to. How do I write this? Is it like u size like this? And that's actually looking good. What is elves? What's it telling me about elves here? Um, so we can come down here and let's just try this. What if we put uh, elves? here and we need we need to put the debug print in here like this and now we can do a cargo run and that's pretty cool actually we got um you can see already we got an array or a vector of all these different elf sizes so assuming the math's right um we're basically getting close to where we want to be um a classic mistake i remember making this when doing the 2015 challenge is what i want to do and you can't do is to come here and then do like sort like this because each of these functions that I'm putting in the pipeline takes something in and then returns the returns the stuff sort does not it changes the value of the thing itself in place and it returns nothing um, so you can't pipeline like that so what I mean you need to do here is come down here and say otherwise otherwise this so like this whole time all this stuff the result of collect is somewhere stored in memory and eventually I'm going to try to set it to elves if I pass it into sort, that thing in memory gets sorted, and then nothing returns, and nothing gets saved to elves, and that's not what I want. So I'm going to do elves.sort, like that, and I'm going to do elves. Well, let's see. I think 
save this and give it a run. What don't we like about that? Uh, it's immutable. We're changing it. So now we have to come up here in Rust and change this to immutable elves. And now if we run this, we have uh, nicely sorted. Um, you can see the longest one is, the, the highest one is the is last. So let's actually come, that's what I was starting to, I thought that was going to be the case, but let's, we can do an elves.reverse. Oop, not reserve. R E V R. Yeah, I think it's a verse. Like that. And if we run that now, we get the smallest one at the back. Let's see. Do we have. Yep, okay, that's looking good. So now we can come down here and say, like, L sub zero. I don't even think we need the debug print. We'll get rid of that. Uh, and there we go. That is the correct answer. I remember from the previous video. Um, and then we can do elves.iter. Let's do take three. So we'll get the first three, the highest three. That sum. And let's see what happens if we try to do that. Hmm, why doesn't it like sum? Um, cannot infer the type. Okay, we will tell you the type. We know the type. U size. I don't know why you can't infer the type, but okay. And there we go. That is uh, that is both correct answers, I believe. Um, we'll double check here. Uh, if we go Python day one, day one dot pi, I think my input should be the same, right? Input dot text. And I I got two answers in there, but yeah, so it's the same. Um, awesome. Cutting this one short. Just a really quick video to look at it in Rust. Uh, let me know if you if. Let me know if the Rust videos are, if you really enjoy them, very, like leave me a lot of comments and likes on this one because I'm probably not going to do that many in Rust, um, but if you all love them, I might be convinced. So uh, thanks, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.